case of any other institution, a public university, a state university, this had no consequence. I mean, it's uh, just beyond uh, the, 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 the scope of, uh, of interest of, uh, of the institution. It's a private matter. Uh, but on the other hand, one can say that, well, uh, marriage or a, a registered same-sex partnership is by nature more and different than just having a friend or a boyfriend or a girlfriend or whatever. Uh, it is something public. And in this situation, the person who is one of the, the voices of the institution, he speaks in the name of the university, in a sense. Uh, he is, uh, uh, he is uh, engaging in publicly in, uh, in a condition that is contrary to the doctrine of the Catholic Church. Uh, it's quite obvious and beyond any question that uh, professors of theology, clergymen, uh, could not engage into such a relationship. It's, uh, uh, it's beyond any, any doubt. Uh, and interestingly, uh, I'm, I'm never uh, testing or, or uh, uh, evaluating uh, the outcomes, only the reasoning that you, the students are giving. Uh, and interestingly, it's an almost 50 to 50 proportion uh, students uh, reply. Uh, almost 50% say that, well, uh, at a Catholic university, uh, how should I put it? You can't be openly gay. Uh, uh, as long as, it, as it's uh, just uh, your intimate sphere, sphere, intimacy is certainly not an issue for the, empl for the employer. Uh, even uh, at a Catholic university, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the employer had certainly uh, no, uh, no legitimate interest in uh, family planning issues of... Uh, of its uh, employees, or uh, um, I mean, no camera in the bedroom, please. So that's a uh, that's a, that's the intimate sphere of uh, of uh, well, professors or any other employee uh, of uh, of a Catholic institution. But how far can uh, uh, the legitimate interest of uh, of the university of uh, giving? Uh, uh, giving a credible message uh, on the doctrine of the church, go into uh, to the uh, to the private life of uh, of its uh, uh, of its uh, employees. Uh, certainly, it's a uh, in a narrow sense, it's uh, not a human rights issue, uh, or one could say that it's a Dietwilkung issue because both the university as a as a uh, church-maintained institution and the individual bear rights, and it's a kind of a Dietwilkung issue uh, that they uh, that their rights and interests uh, have to be uh, have to be have to be uh, balanced in a uh, in a way. When we look at the origins, and uh, originally all these institutions maintained by the church, uh, hospitals, uh, schools, uh, whatever. Uh, traditionally used to be 100% homogeneous. Uh, it was a, normally a religious order, for example, to maintain an institution. And uh, from the cleaning staff uh, to the management, let us say, uh, everyone was, was member, of the, member of the community. And it was quite obvious that uh, when you are knocking the door, uh, the doorman also carries the identity of the institution. And uh, from the doorman uh, to the head of the institution, everyone bears the message. And everyone has this fundamental task and duty and vocation uh, to, to, to carry uh, the message. But nowadays, in most of our institutions, uh, uh, probably even more in uh, in Western Europe than, than with us, uh, but uh, national situations may differ, differ to country to country. Uh, the majority of people who, who uh, pursue the activity of, these, of the institution maintained by the church uh, are, are simply employees. Uh, they have a work contract. 
And their work contract is very similar. Their everyday work is very, very similar to that that any other that they would have in other, any other institution. Uh, in uh, Germany, uh, still uh, uh, after uh, the public sector, the second biggest uh, uh, employer is uh, the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church, having close to one million employees. But uh, um, uh, most of them are uh, do not belong to the respective churches. Uh, at, uh, at hospitals, uh, you would rather have uh, uh, Turks and, and other Muslims uh, uh, doing uh, the, the, the nursing, etc. The nursing that originally in Catholic institution was done by nuns. And uh, it's obvious that those nuns were carrying the identity of the institution. Uh, can we have the same expectations uh, from the uh, from the Turkish Muslim uh, staff, the uh, uh, staff members, than we could have uh, from uh, from nuns? And uh, uh, here, uh, it's a it's a question of identity and freedom. How uh, how we regard at these institution, these institutions, and certainly also a question of a social self understanding. Uh, when we have uh, too many institutions uh, that are all that cannot that, that where the identity of the institution is not really determined by the church anymore, but it's uh, just on the facade. Uh, just the name has been changed, but in fact it's almost as if it was a, a public institution, then probably the expectation the institution can have uh, has to be more moderate. Obviously, uh, there are two important label of factors uh, that has to be considered. One is foreseeability. Uh, employees have to know what the expectations are. And uh, they be, have to be aware of the expectations. Uh, and uh, and the other is uh, is, a, is an aspect of uh, let us say equal treatment or non discrimination. Um, when uh, we regard these issues, these requirements, as uh, as faith based identity requirements, uh, the European Court of Human Rights had uh, the parallel cases of Obst and Schutt a couple of years ago from Germany. Uh, when we regard them as core identity issues of the institution, uh, then we cannot handle other employees in a, civil, in, a, in a similar situation differently. What we tolerate to one professor, uh, we cannot uh, invoke with another professor. And certainly, then it comes down to the question of whether we have the same requirements uh, for just for professors or for all teaching staff, or we go even deeper and uh, we basically uh, have to claim that uh, everyone uh, uh, serving at this institution uh, has to be in line in conformity with the doctrine of the institution, or at least it has he has he or she has to respect the doctrine of the institution. Um, it's uh, uh, with. Uh, um, associate professors and full professors, uh, we asked for a, 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 well, a, a declaration of alliance, let us say. Uh, and uh, this has two different formula. Uh, one would be that, well, I support, and the other would be that I, I accept, I respect the identity of the institution. But someone uh, not respecting the identity wouldn't be fit uh, for teaching at the Catholic University. Well, as the social setting may be changing, uh, this certainly affects uh, uh, institutions. But I think the question remains open. And on the one hand, we have a growing social pressure that uh, well, private issues don't matter with employment. Uh, on the other hand, uh, I still believe that uh, uh, an institution consists of human persons and human persons are uh, expressing their identity through their work and it's not just the technical work that bears a message uh, that carries the message uh, but somehow an 
unseen aspect as well. Uh, even with this, let us say, the simplest job, uh, cleaning the corridor or the restrooms, uh, it's not the same whether the cleaning staff is doing it uh, 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 in a in a uh, uh, an attitude of of service uh, and uh, uh, I wouldn't say praying, uh, but yes, work can be uh, like a prayer uh, for someone who is a believer, and the same work, seemingly the same work. Uh, can be just, uh, well, a nasty task uh, one uh, has to do for living. And uh, with institutions having, uh, having an identity, uh, carrying this identity, it, uh, should be, there should be a respected and acknowledged possibility uh, to have a clear preference uh, for people who do the service, uh, that that service should carry the identity of the institution. And uh, we have to find or maintain uh, the possibility that in, in these institutions, uh, not just the person, person's identity and conscience shall be respected, uh, but the, the identity of the institution as well. I don't know where, what your option would be, and I don't want to test you because uh, it's enough for me to test my students, uh, but uh, but uh, I think that uh, that is a rising issue in uh, in our societies that uh, how we can maintain uh, the identity of uh, church-run institutions, and as societies are becoming uh, clearly more uh, and more uh, diverse uh, in uh, in. Uh, lifestyle and conscience and convictions and uh, churches work with human beings institutions work with human beings legal cases have to be on rise and more and more cases will come up in both of our countries and beyond thank you for your patience and i would hand it over Thank you, Balaj. If no one has uh, a question or a comment. I think, I think let's have the comments after. Um, Adam? Uh, uh, thank you, Laurent. Uh, uh, good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, there was a huge storm an hour ago uh, here. And because of that, my internet is really unstable. I hope uh, I won't lose your attention <laughs> within the next 10 or 15 uh, minutes. And I try to share my screen. Uh, do you see me in, do you see my uh, my first slide do you see my slide yes we do oh thank you thank you uh, so um, the title is Freedom of Conscience within Public Administration in uh, Hungary. And uh, in my last presentation, I presented the international context and the main directions of the uh, issue under uh, discussion. What are the operational aspects, areas of activity and other facts along which the difficulties related to the conscience of public administration staff are most concentrated. Um, the law can only deal with a conscience that is expressed. 
uh, it is manifested in action or in action, in some cases, conduct that can be uh, qualified as omission. And action often means the expression of an opinion, orally, uh, in a written form or in other forms, with this expression of opinion now increasingly taking place through the platforms available through the modern mass media and in particular social media. This approach also implies, of course, the assumption that a person's words and actions are reasonably inferred from his or her convictions or are explicitly conscience driven. Uh, there are some new directions uh, in contemporary Hungarian jurisprudential uh, research. For lack of time, I will uh, mention only two of uh, them. First, the emergence of Christian conscience as a new line of investigation in the Hungarian literature uh, is also instructive. In one of his studies, uh, Gergely Deli uh, places Christian conscience at the center of his concept of law. He suggests that in addition to the prevailing constitutionalism based on human dignity, which is individualistic, individualistic, uh, consequence oriented expressed in human rights and rational there is also an emotional constitutionalism or legal concept based on human salvation which is personal is intention oriented and which makes sense the subject of the concern and which is measured by the bible and not only by the existing law uh, by the existing uh, legal sources. Uh, um, it also uh, raises the question of the uh, basis on which a Christian, in our case a public servant, can sue or sue at all when it comes to resolving a conflict of conscience. Uh, second, uh, we can see the emergence of institutional conscience. Uh, of the phenomena or notion of institutional conscience and also of social conscience within the scientific literature, according to one of the judgments, uh, conscience, uh, it states that conscience and religious conviction are part of the human quality and can only be possessed by a natural person, by a living human being. But the emergence of institutional conscience and social conscience can be ob observed within the Hungarian scientific literature. Um, in addition to corpor corporate social conscience and responsibility, the social responsibility of public authorities, uh, which goes beyond their own dire tasks uh, and is not regulated by law, is also emerging. Um, in the following, uh, we will examine um, in more detail uh, where and how issues of conscience and, as mentioned above, of expression of opinion um, appear in the personal of Hungarian public sector institutions. Uh, that is, we will ident identify the main groups of legal types of rules the typical types of conflicts and the main elements and key aspects of the legal arguments um, uh, used in legal decisions on these issues. Uh, due to time constraints, only a limited number of cases are presented here or will be presented here today. Uh, the vast majority of the examples and legal cases that will be used in my chapter uh, are connected with the so-called public servants employed in budgetary organizations providing typically human public services such as schools and hospitals. So, um, the central question for today is how can the, the substantive law and the whole legal system limit 
and reduce problems related to the conscience issue within the civil service through its own means uh, here in Hungary. Um, and uh, I will, I will uh, uh, give uh, five different uh, answers. Um, we can uh, we can uh, we can uh, speak about the classic legal rules, about the practice of those uh, rules, um, also about uh, the the importance of intentional omission within that field in research. Uh, about sensitization within public administration and also about the regulation provided by non-state actors. Uh, so, um, the first one uh, is the category of pre-established, preemptive legal type uh, rules. Um, there are uh, some rules uh, laying down general principles, thereby also guiding employees in the matters of conscience, such as principle of loyalty, the protection of economic interests, the protection of reputation, which may restrict some rights uh, of the uh, employees. Uh, there are uh, also some specific provisions of labor law and also of other branches of law in uh, uh, normative acts such as and these are only uh, e examples it's uh, not a, a full list of of uh, those categories for example for example there are um, rules on conflict of interest uh, about the right to refuse a patient's request uh, for or for uh, treatment uh, according uh, to uh, act on healthcare here in Hungary, a doctor directly involved in patient care may refuse to examine a patient who comes to him because of his, of his or her personal relationship with the uh, patient. Uh, there is uh, also a new whistleblower protection uh, system here in Hungary. Um, a new act uh, uh, issued this year uh, imposes a number of obligations on the employers concerned, including public authorities. This can ensure that, uh, that some whistleblowing is not abused, but can be done in a safe way. Thus, also ensuring and facilitating conscientious behavior. Uh, then, uh, we can also see uh, rules uh, on the elimination of some traditional social uh, conflicts. For example, uh, there is an old Hungarian tradition uh, of informal payments or gratuities within the healthcare system. There was uh, 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 quite a long tradition, but a new act of 2020 on healthcare service relationship had led to a significant wage increase in the sector, in the health sector. But at the same time, uh, um, uh, informal uh, bribery type um, payments have been uh, formally uh, phased out of the system, of the healthcare system, and banned in general by the new legal provisions. Um, the operation of various external consultative mechanisms uh, is also important uh, within uh, that uh, uh, field of provisions. And dispute resolution, the existence and legal uh, regulation of dispute resolution forms 
within the civil service is also important. Uh, for example, public service interest uh, conciliation forum in uh, Hungary. It also enables uh, uh, to, to solve um, uh, problems uh, connected with uh, conscious uh, issues uh, within uh, the public administration uh, here in Hungary. And there are also further provisions in indi individual employment contracts or collective agreements or other internal documents of the uh, authorities of the uh, public uh, administrative authorities uh, with similar uh, objectives. Um, there is, as I have already mentioned, uh, uh, legal practice. Um, uh, and I highlight only two uh, aspects of uh, that practice. Uh, there is a consistent judicial, domestic and international practice in the area of freedom of expression. For example, uh, that sh uh, shows that practicing the right of freedom of expression is not unlimited. The practice of the fundamental right has to, compared, has to be compared with other fundamental rights and constitutional values. In labor law, the fundamental right of the freedom of expression dominantly causes collision with the personal rights to honor and reputation and economic organizational interests also appear as limiting rights uh, and some further ones as well, as I have mentioned it earlier. So labor law systems create boundaries for this freedom. These restrictions are varied since different kind of employer's action preventing the harmful exercise of rights and sanctions negatively affecting the employees are all known. The uh, Curia, the Constitutional Court, European Court of Human Rights has uh, or have a wide range of case law in this sense, focusing primarily on the ways, the necessity, uh, and the proportionality of the limitations of freedom of expression along with the legitimate uh, sanctions the employer can apply. In my forthcoming study, I will also examine in more detail uh, cases that provide a picture on the labor, labor law treatment of opinions posted on social networking sites and the scope and extent of their protection. Um, and there is also a cons consistent uh, judicial uh, interpretation of other acts beyond those that are connected with the uh, freedom of expression. Formerly, I mean, uh, within Hungarian public administration, formerly oath, uh, more recently vaccination, uh, I mean, a few years ago, and currently, uh, civil disobedience of teachers uh, were and are the most frequent uh, forms uh, of, um, of that. It should be noted here that the rights of conscience are usually coached as negative rights. That is, the right to refuse requests or orders or of the uh, employer. Um, uh, what about uh, that category of intentional omission? Uh, when, as a law enforcer, for example, as a police officer, I do not enforce legal type rules and thus satisfy my uh, conscience, thus exercising my freedom of uh, conscience, it comes to intentional omission. This is dangerous uh, because it overburdens the whole legal system with rules that are not applied and also damages trust in the legal system. Uh, for example, to give you an example, some law enforcers in Hungary do not agree 
uh, with the criminalization of homelessness. And therefore, they do not apply the already discretionary rules. Thus, legislative uh, intent often fails to achieve its purpose because without the motivation and consent of the law enforcers, the law is uh, powerless, I have to say. Um, it's also important that in parallel with legal rules, with the legal rules, uh, uh, there is also a sensitization or there, um, uh, the importance of sensitization uh, is increasing. Um, sensitization in the civil service becomes an important factor as well. Conscience is not a static phenomenon. It can be shaped and molded, and not only by legislation, it's really important. Uh, sensitization is constantly increasing uh, its role in public service training and further training uh, in Hungary. And the last point uh, is uh, regulation um, of our topic by non-state uh, actors, for example, by Facebook, uh, when official law is only an ultima ratio and the market is left to prevent, also in its own interest, mass conflicts of uh, uh, conscience. For example, Facebook started work by restricting freedom of expression as if it was a state, uh, they set up their own court-like organization uh, which uses uh, Facebook's own soft laws as quasi-laws. On the positive side, however, the legal expertise has been preferred to algorithmic content filtering and there is a possibility to challenge the decisions of the Facebook's Audit and Risk Oversight Committee uh, by appeals uh, as well. Um, thank you very much uh, for your uh, attention. Thank you very much. Who would like to start from the Polish side? Any volunteers? Would you, would you be a volunteer to start? Yes. Sure, thank you. Do yes. you have slides? Uh, good morning, uh, everything. Uh, good morning, Florent. Uh, in this seminar, I told you about conscientious objection and conscience clause for an advocate and an attorney at law. In Poland, uh, the advocacy and attorneys at law uh, corporations have their own individual laws, both were enacted by the same in 1982. We will uh, not find conscience clause in these laws directly, but in legal acts uh, of a hierarchy, uh, hierarchy lower um, order. Both legal corporations uh, have their uh, codes of professional ethics, and there we will find provisions guaranteeing a conscientious objection in these legal provisions. Uh, I would like to remind you that the Advocates Code of Ethics was adopted by the Supreme Bar Council of 22 September 2022. In contrast, the Code of Ethics for Attorneys at Laws was codified 
on 7th uh, February 2023. As an aside, uh, I will say that currently in Poland, only advocates and attorneys at laws as two free corporate professional professions uh, have uh, the full right uh, to provide legal assistance. Historically, uh, the profession of advocates uh, appeared in Poland um, after 1810, following uh, the model of French legal solutions. Attorneys uh, at laws appeared in Poland um, 40 years ago in uh, 1982, to be exact. Uh, and initially worked in full-time positions in state uh, and places while advocates worked in bar associations uh, corporate chambers. The two legal professions of advocate uh, and attorney at law are professions uh, of public trust and uh, are related professions. Each his its uh, own separate professional self-government and membership of its uh, mandatory of every advocate and attorney at law. Otherwise, the profession of advocate and attorney at law uh, cannot uh, be practiced. Uh, since uh, 1st July 2015, attorneys at laws have the same defensive powers as advocates. The divisive separation between these legal professions is currently um, organizational and historical um, and the for artificial. There are calls to merge the two professions and corporations uh, into one. The basic uh, difference between an advocate and an attorney at law is that then the advocate can work as uh, as uh, sorry as an attorney at law, and an advocate cannot have a regular job anywhere except uh, in university. Membership uh, fees uh, for the professional corporation are higher for advocates <laughs> as they amount to 135 Polish water per month and for attorneys at lows to 111 Polish water. There are more than 50,000 attorneys at lows and there are uh, approximately 22,000 advocates in Poland. Every advocate and uh, trainee advocate should comply with the law and the rules of advocacy ethics. Uh, sim similarly, every attorney, attorney at law and um, trainee attorney at law should observe the law and the rules of ethics of an attorney's laws. Both codes of professional ethics are similar in content. They are based on several systemic principles, uh, the most important being independence, uh, honesty, um, conscientiousness and protection uh, of clients' interests. An advocate and attorney at law must defend the client's interests in a courageous and honorable uh, manner. 
the client's uh, relationship with the advocate or attorney, attorney at law is based on trust. The advocate should keep his distance from both the client and the case and hand, as well as from the opposing part uh, of his advocate. The relationship between an advocate and his client must also be based on the principle of loyalty and the uh, duty of professional uh, status. Every advocate enjoys full freedom and independence in the exercises of his professional activities. The advocate must be free from the influence of the media and other enti entities. The advocate must avoid the so-called conflict of interest. For example, an advocate must not uh, undertake to contact a case against a person who is close to him, her, and against a person with whom he has a serious personal dispute. Conscientious objection by an, an advocate and uh, attorney at law under the Polish law. The advocate and an attorney at law, like any human being, have the right to ex express conscientious objection. But the question uh, arises if this is always possible. To answer this question, it's necessary to uh, distinguish, distinguish between two situations. It's different uh, when an advocate or attorney at law acts out of free choice. And it's different when they act ex officio, i.e. they are appointed by the corporate authorities, advocates, or attorneys at laws, respectively. The decision to appoint an ex officio advocate is taken by the court uh, hearing the case of the public prosecutor. It should be noted the, that the profession of advocate and an attorney at law are so called free legal professions. They are solicited on the basis of a contract between the client and the advocate. The advocate and can decide independently whether he will represent a particular person in a particular case. Can an advocate and attorney at law invoke conscientious objection? The first, just as every human being, he has a constitutional human right to freedom of conscience and religion, as this is granted by the Polish, Polish constitution of 2nd April 1997, Article 53, item 1 and 2. Secondly, the advocate may invoke the law on the bear, Article 28, item 1, which guarantees that he may refuse to provide legal assistance only for important reasons of which he informs the in interested party. Thus, the concept of important reasons is very capacious and vague. It was being accepted in judicial decisions that these reasons may be the following, temporary 
in this position of the advocate, uh, difficult family situation, extraordinary uh, fortuitous events, lack uh, of narrow specialization necessary for the proper uh, for the proper provision of legal assistance and conscientious objection of the lawyer. Therefore, the advocate cannot accept a case that he has a conscientious objection to because his contact will be contrary to ethical principles. He, uh, sorry, the advocate um, acting against his own conscien conscience will never fully pursue the client's interest. A lawyer's conscientious objection may be cast not only be the case itself, but the evidence and the manner in which it was obtained. In such a situation, he should also refuse to represent the client. The situation for advocates and attorneys at laws is completely dif different in the case of cases aside to term ex officio. And this is where there is the most legal controversy and dilemma. The right to conscientious objection seem to be despairing. This is because the advocate's freedom of action and choice is severely restricted in this respect, as everything is decided not by the advocate himself, but the authority and appointed him for this particular case. That is, the court of the public prosecutor. When there, these authorities will recognize the advocate's application justified by conscientious objection to relieve the advocate of his duty to represent the client for so called compelling reasons. The situation can be difficult because it will take quite a long time before the court or the prosecutor decides to dismiss the advocate and during this time the advocate has to properly represent his client. Look after his interests, interests even against his conscience. The problem arises when the advocate is appointed as a defense counsel for the accused in the final phase of the trial. And the procedure for his exclusion could adversely affect the course of the case. However, in practice, the advocates and attorneys at laws deal with cases that cause them conscientious objection in the following way. The advocates who don't wish to act in, for example, criminal or divorce, divorce case, cases, uh, report this to the authorities of the Bear Corporation so they that they are not appointed to handle these cases. The advocate uses the so-called substitution power of attorney, i.e. referring the case uh, to another advocate or uh, 
ano, a to wnajdzie tytuł. The advocate can refer such a client to the district bar council and there is a list of lawyers dealing with specific cases. Nevertheless, the inability to involve conscientious objection is a serious problem for trainee advocates and attorneys at laws in point. They very often have no say it what type of case will be advised to them by a patron and uh, an advocate uh, or an attorney at law. Thus, what cases in practice may raise a conflict of conscience for the advocate or attorneys at law, a criminal defending uh, a defendant uh, for murder of a human being, uh, murder of child, uh, pedophilia, uh, rape, uh, accusation of abortion, uh, euthanasia, um, offenses against religion, AG, um, insulting the cross, uh, insulting the Bible. And of the civil cases, AG, divorce of combination of the defendant, uh, priest uh, or parish for pedophilia acts, it is. In any event, the advocate should refuse to provide legal assistance to his client as soon as possible. In conclusion, I could like to say that the possibility for an advocate or attorney at law to invoke the conscience clause is not a necessary element for refusal to provide legal services. Nevertheless, the existence of such a provision in the Polish law incorporate laws would facilitate refusal procedure in the case of the advocate or attorney at law acting ex officio. At this point, I would like to point out that such a legal regulation is found in the French, French Bear Act of 31 December 19 90, where there is explicitly written conscience clause. It reads as follows. A lawyer may request exemption from a defense which he considers contrary to his conscience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dishtam. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Marta or Micha. Okay, can I? <laughs> First? <laughs> okay. Uh, today I would like to briefly discuss on the issue of increasing emerging in the practice of Poland, or writer of Polish admin administrative courts. Um, the personal and in kind defense benefits introduced in the Polish Homeland Defense Act in 2022. Uh, have an established line of jurisprudence in the administrative courts. The Polish courts uh, refuse to grant uh, conscientious objection, objection to those who wish to exempt themselves from these benefits. The crucial question, however, is whether its attitude of the courts is justified in international law and jurisprudence, and if not, whether it should change in the Polish law, of course. Uh, so, put very simply, the issue uh, is how wide the limits uh, of the military conscience, whether they extend of peaceful uh, peacetime benefits. 
for some time now, the issue of uh, conscientious objection to defense benefits has been increasing rise uh, in the jurisprudence of administrative courts. These benefits uh, provide for the Section 21 of the Homeland Defense Act are devised in nature. In the most general terms, it can be said that they are sh in short term ad hoc personal or material benefits imposed by way and administrative decision in peacetime and under partially different rules also in the event of an announcement of mobilization and in a wartime. From the perspective of the classification adopted under Polish law, performing defense services does not constitute a form of performing military service, nor is it substitute service. Instead, it is regarded and the performance of the obligation to defend of Fatherland referent in Article 85 of the Polish Constitution. The benefits in question are not themselves strictly military in uh, nature. In other words, they are not tasks located directly in the area of operation of the arm, uh, armed forces. And the personal obligate to full fight the, them does not become a soldier for the reason, nor does the act of the structure of military subordination. At the same time, however, the connection of the services in the military sphere, functional or organizational, is sometimes quite clear. This raised strong objective from those professional integral pacifists and invoke of the religious and moral principles in order to obtain an exemplation from the service obligation. In practice, the manly concerns members of the religious association of Jehovah Witness in Poland knows of their negative attitude towards military service and the radical rejection, rejection of political involvement. The position of the administrative courts on the admissibility uh, of granting such an exemption of quite an evocal. The performance of defense service cannot be acquired with military service, as it is separate for a full fightment on the universal, universal defense duty, which is not covered by constitution and international legal guarantees uh, on uh, uh, conscientious objection. Uh, for example, uh, uh, I'll talk about uh, the uh, Supreme Administrative Court, uh, Polish, uh, from 2020. The Rush Patent line uh, has just been drawn. Administrative courts legitimately uh, restrict underutilized interpretation extending uh, conscientious objection in the non-defense sphere. However, they should be more flexible with regard to conscientious objection in relation from forms of full fulfillment to the duty to defend the Republic functionally related to military service and access of legitimation of the objection in the realities of each particular case. Peacetime, peacetime defense benefits are divided in Polish law into personal and um, in-kind benefits. In addition, there are other benefits that might be imposed on territorial bodies of government, administration, state institution, bodies of law, self-government, as well, and other organizational units. But um, what about personal service? But personal service consists in the performance on various types of an ad hoc work for the purpose of preparing uh, state defense or combating natural disaster and uh, eliminating their effect. Uh, they may also include the uh, use uh, or own uh, simple tools. And in the case of couriers, for example, persons um, delivering documents of appointment to active military service and calls for service, also owned means uh, of transport. The obligation of performed service may be imposed of person with Polish citizenships who are at least 16 and under 60 years of age. In kind service, on the other hand, consists in the handing over for use the owned real estate and movable property in the purpose of preparing the defense of the state. Such an obligation may be imposed on state office and introduction as well as entrepreneurial and other organization units as well of natural person. 
Most of the complaints before the administrative courts in relation to moral and religious objections expressed by obliged person relate to personal service. However, it should be noted that the personal service for defense are ad hoc and of short duration. The duration of their performance may be not exceed um, uh, 12 uh, hours at a time, and in the case of couriers and personal delivering and handling objects of the in-kind service, the upper limit is um, 48 hours, including travel and rest. Moreover, the obligation to perform um, they may be imposed no more than three times a year. Uh, and it's therefore difficult to assume a priori that the motivation of those sick um, expansion is uh, in censoring and driven by a desire to avoid time consuming duties, for example, potentially uh, dystropic or the rhythm of the family life and career with may have been a significant reason to evading uh, months of basic military service years ago. Personal service is, is um, much less um, important in this respect. Moreover, a person's obligation to perform personal service can only be a potential. Indeed, the law provides on the possibility of the competent authority to issue both a decision to impose an obligation to perform personal service and a decision to assign a person to perform such service. In the case of decision to inmar the relevant obligation only materializes when the person concerned in call it open to perform such services. Um, both types of decision can be applied to the governor. However, the summons itself is not subject to appeal because uh, then the person may still make a viable attempt to legal evade the uh, obligation imposed of him. After the summons, the only available procedural solution is not notified to authority of the person's uh, inability to appear for service. Wherever document justification must be provided once the reason for the inability has crossed. The law contains a catalog of persons uh, not uh, subject to the obligation of personal service. This catalog includes category of person um, distinguished on the basic of their function or nature and place of work. For example, senators, judges, soldiers, and active military service, employees of certain armed security formation, or by the particular person or social situation. For, for example, person with uh, several of moderate disabilities, a pregnant woman. Uh, those not uh, subject to this obligation do not include persons whose religious um, conviction or professed moral principles prevent them from fulfilling their benefits. The sphere of benefits is also not considered to be a circumstance uh, justify not appearance from the provision of service, as the legislation only mentions illness or other accidental circumstances in the context. Uh, it follows that the circumstances excluding not appearance, including only a uh, present obstacle on the objective nature um, uh, of the object person to perform. The arguments for benefits in kind are similar in contents. All by taking into account the um, this time of benefits, they are limited in terms of time. This type uh, of benefits is also rule may not exist an any of time in the case of collecting an objective of benefits in order to the check of mobilization readiness. Uh, for example, I'm forced uh, 48 hours in connection with military exercises or exercises in units indeed for militarization only seven days and in connection with civil defense exercises or practical exercises within the scope of general self self-defense only 24 hours, as in the holder no more than three times a year, with collection of benefits object for a week in connection with exercises relatively in the most onerous, being possible only once a year. So, a certain, uh, certain in uh, convenience, however, is obligation to inform the major, uh, the city president, of uh, the uh, disposition of the property or a uh, movable item in the question. It may also be true that the, uh, such a charge on the thing potentially reduced is a market value. Uh, 
The difference with personal benefits is that the law does not provide for the issue of the decision to impose an obligation to provide a benefit in kind, but only to allocate the real or movable property for the purpose of benefits in kind. The law does not contain a catalog of uh, entities example for the obligation to provide benefits in kind but it does indicate which objects may not be subject to such benefits. The freedom of true conscience and the religion of the obliged person is respected by including the catalogue of temples, houses or of prayer and the premises of church and the other religious association, giving, uh, giving legal personality together with the objects related there in deed of the performance of the religious worship. In contrast, the provisions of the law do not take into account the possibility of refraining from performing of a service in kind due to the moral objection of the holder of the object to the potential use of the object of the nature of the institution that would use it. A reading of the ruling of the administrative courts which deal with appeals against the decision of the allocation of defense benefits for performance relevates a certain repetition of the arguments formulated by the contemplants. The usual point of the um, uh, contradiction of the obligation with their religious and moral principles, referring of the constitutional and international standard of protection of freedom and through conscience and religion. It is personally the involving of this standard that can be explaining when the inquiry's interest in the prospect of obtaining an exception from the obligation to provide defense service on religious uh, grounds. Uh, for example, in the European legal space, uh, we talk about uh, the um, Bataillon in Armenia. So, um, in the court, uh, this case, uh, who, was a big, who became a millstone in approach to the conscious objection to military service, but uh, we, we, we know uh, this, um, this case, so I don't want to talk about it. Uh, this, jug, uh, this judgment explicitly departs from the previ uh, previous legal view on the interpretation of the Article 9 of the Convention of the Human Rights. Indeed, until now, it had been assumed that freedom, the true conscience and the religion under the Convention did not include the right to obtain, on the basis of the uh, conscientious objection, exemplation from military service. Uh, for the tribunal, an objection to military service is when motivated by a serious and in Sherman table conflict between one's obligation to perform military service and one's conscience on the one's deeply and sincerely held conviction, religious or otherwise, constitutes a conviction of sufficient personal force, certain coherence and movements and to be coherent or guarantees or Article 9. The impact of court ruling of the awareness of this seeking exemption for the defense benefits is easy to see. It manifests um, itself not only in the increased number of cases in the area, but also in the context of individual complaints. Whereas a dozen years ago, a fabrication arguments were rather, um, uh, it's not very elaborate nowadays. The regular reference to the Bayatayan case in the category of strong and in, um, in Shamarabari conflict and uh, suffices pursue power, service, consistency and relevance of the beliefs and question taken directly from the Strasbourg Dictionary. As a rule, the applicant invoked the fact of their conscience, trying the Bible, a Bible does not allow them to learn the se uh, secrets of military art. The concept of military art is understood in an expensive sense, since duties such as performing work as a driver, as evacuation group, including a transport and equipment, and evacuation of supplies, performing courier duties involving the delivery and the delivery of military service, appointment cards, evacuating people for the world port commanded, or even regulating the movement of means of transport are involved in this, this case. The applicant's um, attitude in the record is one side, their conscience does not allow to participate even in slightest degree in activities related to military service. 
even if they not do not involve the carrying of weapons and and taking part in military activities and participation in the full fight of defense defense uh, service would mean supporting military matters which would not please god the idea therefore is to reject any form of service to the military even is not where to directly related in the handling of weapons or regular service in the structures polish administrative courts have uh, consciously rejected such a, a broad uh, view of uh, conscience objection objection in the view of supreme administrative courts the appeals uh, unjustified uh, extend the guarantees relating of military service to other forms of general duty to defense. The solution provided under Article 85 of the Polish Constitution, for example, the institution of alternative um, service constitutes an alternative only to military service and has the nature of an expansion. Defense service are not a form of military service and it's not possible to obtain exam um, exemption from them on the basis of uh, consciousness objection. Furthermore, the Supreme Administrative Court emphasizes that the argument from the Bayatayan case un is uh, unreliable in the case and is any insufficient between benefits that are not military service as well as alternative service are not affected in the case law of European Court of Human Rights and can therefore only serve to interpret the provision invoked to a limited extent. The reality of uh, the moral integrity of the applicants is also disputed. In the view of Supreme Administrative Court, there are no grants to assign the uh, applicant performance on his job and the category C driver in the evacuation group will lead to a violation of the essence of the right arising from the freedom, uh, freedom of uh, religion uh, down in the Article 53 of the Polish Constitution. So, um, uh, as it seems, uh, the possibility uh, of establishing uh, such links uh, in undergrad question, it's uh, worth nothing that is tactic to, of invoking uh, conscientious objection as the justification for refusing to contribute funds to the military has been declared manifestly inadmissible by the Strasbourg Court. National courts are um, entitled to examine under condition of procedural fairness whether the international conflict um, experience by a person is a real and in Chernobyl. This serves the purpose of preventing abuse of the possibility of obtaining relief. However, the validity of conscience objection cannot be made depend on the formal membership of a religious committee professional certain beliefs. This is because the court is assessing to the deep and sincerely of the particular person beliefs, not an abstract review of compatibility of a legal obligation with a religious doctrine. From this perspective, the argumentation, the argumentation of the Polish administrative courts, when they try to demonstrate on a moral and political level um, the possibility of a reconciling defendant's service with the fruit of faith of, for example, Jehovah Witness, seems misguised. The issue of consciousness objection to defense uh, services revolves the difficulty of providing due protection to personal who religious conviction or professional moral principles do not allow them to support the military with personal action, even if they are not be associated with particip participation in combat or carrying weapons. The identification of the legal problem is um, Upscored in the case by the classification applied in Polish law, according to which defense uh, benefits contribute a form of full fight in the constitutional obligation to defend the homeland separate from military service. It is worth considering whether the line of jurisprudence of Polish administrative court in the matter should change. Indeed, the international guarantees of the right of uh, conscience objectory may also cover those public law personal obligation of the individual towards the army, which are not considered an military service under national law. The correctness of an individual decision to grant an exemption uh, from personal service requires the court to assess both the sincerity and deep of the uh, applicant's conviction and the connection to the service in question in the military sphere.
However, the path to making this protection a um, reality in um, judicial practice leads not through the, the absolutation of religious freedom and on relative expectation to the right to conscious objection as sometimes expected by applicants, but by taking into account the evolution of the Strasbourg line of jurisprudence initiating in the Bayatayan case and development and, for example, Adeyayan and other cases. The most desirable scenario would be for the legis policy legislation to take uh, into the evolution into account uh, and to aim to be relevant provisions in a way that clearly indicates possible depth about the applicable scope on protection. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Marta. And now, last but not least, let's listen, Mihal. Thank you, thank you, or um, um, thank you for your uh, previous presentations. And and I'm sorry for being a little bit late. Uh, I'm I'm really sorry about it. Um, I have a presentation, and just uh, right now I'm going to to really explore it. Uh, do you see this presentation? Yes. Okay. It's the continuation of the last previous presentation. Um, and I would like to be uh, brief <laughs> and, and, and if, if I can, <laughs> that would be uh, nice. Um, but of course, if you <laughs> if you're ready, uh, uh, I also before I start to to, to present uh, some general remarks and, and other things, um, uh, if we have space for uh, a little bit of the discussion that will be nice because uh, I have some questions to the uh, professors. Um, but if, if of course. Um, but so, um, of course, um, uh, when I go back to uh, the first presentation, because this is the continuation, uh, I just um, would like to mention, just very briefly to mention that um, in Poland, we still um, in, uh, we are still interested in implementation of the famous judgment of the Constitutional Tribunal uh, from uh, 2020. Mm, of course, it was about the uh, um, abortion, um, but uh, it seems to, to, to us, uh, to Poland, that uh, it uh, has a great impact to the something which we called uh, institutional uh, conscience clause. Mm, uh, first of all, uh, currently the abortion is only permitted because of this judgment uh, in the two cases. But um, what is uh, um, also important for us, it's the another uh, judgment of the Constitutional uh, Tribunal uh, mm, about the uh, mm, profession of the uh, of the doctors and uh, dentists uh, about um, keeping the moral integrity of uh, those who are performing these professions mm. so um um, so uh, when we go back to this uh, another judgment we know that um, uh, right now, there is no space, no legal space for doctors. Uh, there is a no legal obligation for the doctors to inform the patient uh, about another facility to make a legal abortion. If, of course, they meet uh, those legal criteria to 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 have the uh, abortion, and um, but. Right now, we are still in the process of uh, making the legal provisions, how we should deal with this issue. Um, to First of all, to keep the moral integrity of the doctors. And secondly, <laughs> to give the possibility to the others to keep or maybe improve something which we called uh, uh, institutional uh, conscience uh, clause. Why? Um, of course, um, 
Behind of, uh, of, uh, of this, uh, there is a tension between the freedom of the conscience and the other constitutional values. But I would like al also mention about uh, the situation which happened uh, um, from now, 10 years ago. Please imagine, and this is somehow connected to the Balash uh, uh, presentation and the problem which was arised from this presentation. Um, please imagine such a situation. Mm, there is a doctor um, strongly uh, uh, affiliated and, and strongly openly manifest, manifested uh, the, uh, his religious affiliation. Uh, and this uh, doctor, uh, with uh, with the Catholic position, with the strong uh, uh, religious uh, Catholic affiliation and strong moral uh, position, uh, he is uh, the doctor and at the same time director of the hospital, public hospital, public hospital, and he was the first one uh, openly refused the uh, making the abortion and um, and. Uh, um, it was the situation of the problem of how deep we protect the individual conscience in the institution, but he invoked another problem. Many of the hospitals in Poland are not run by the Catholic institutions uh, associations and so on, so on. No, they are not run, but they are called or they are under the name of John Paul II or Cardinal uh, Wyszynski and so on, so on. And this is the, uh, this is the real problem. Um, because uh, how we treat from the sociological point of view the institution, the public institution, but under the name of the uh, of the saint or under the name of the uh, of the uh, uh, John Paul II, for example, if in this public institution, which has still the monopole for um, providing the health care, even the abortion, as a real institution in the sense or in the essence of the patronate of this uh, holy person. And so this is a problematic and this is why in Poland I think we need to discuss about uh, this problem. Uh, in the, in in the presentation of the palace, uh, it was mentioned about this um, about this facade, and then the, this is something we, we, which we observe in Poland. So I go to the public hospital under the name of the of the saint, for example, and should I expect something more, something uh, more moral, or <laughs> I shouldn't expect it because it's the facade. And how about my moral integrity in this situation? And even more, how about moral integrity of the persons, uh, of, 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 of employees in this public, still public uh, um, uh, place facility? So this is, uh, this is a problem. So um, right now I'm going, uh, uh, I'm going to the, uh, to the, uh, what I found. Um, because uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still uh, trying to, to, I'm still writing this uh, short article, and, and so this is uh, uh, um, the, the things which uh, I would like to say. Um, um, in Poland, we, we need to think about the better balance between individual conscience and institutional norms. Uh, uh, of course, the community have the access to the uh, healthcare. To uh, and, and medical ethics, free exercise of the religion, and discrimination against women, all those things came into the analysis uh, in, in in my uh, paper um, in and in, in, in this project. And and this project uh, discovered uh, one uh, one important thing that there is a tension uh, between the individual institutional relationship 
and even more. Uh, it's I, I can say like that. That's mm, uh, it's precludes a solution that treats individual and institutional conscience as equal to one another. So I. I think we can say that we have institutional conscience and we have individual conscience, um, but it's not typical. On legal ground, we have uh, protection of the individual conscience, but there is something behind individual conscience. Uh, and uh, and right now, I, uh, I I I tell I tell you what is the key point uh, in, in in my thinking. Um, so first of all. Today, nowadays, in Poland, the legislator, legislators uh, must seek draw lines between the claims of the conscience in a coherent and in impartial way. So, so that's an obvious fact for me. Um, this is um, not only uh, to say that legislation should accept all uh, consciousness positions, uh, but it must accommodate any act of conscience at all. So it's like that, that we need, given the equal moral integrity of each individual, to the extent uh, we accept conscience for particular procedures or against controlling institutional claims, and we should do uh, this equally. Any solution we, which we can find should be evaluated according to its effects on conscience and also, which is the fundament, and um, on patients' right and access to the medical care, and this is uh, this is uh, important because our constitutional tribunal find out in this famous case that all right, we have a problem um, um, between the individual conscience objection, uh, conscience clause, and at the same time the right. Uh, of the patient to to have the free access to the medical care, which is institutionally protected for all people and guaranteed by the state. So um, uh, now um, I'm thinking about the two models, um, right? And mod which is the model one and model two, and I will uh, do briefly. Uh, 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 Mm, uh, uh, um, a few uh, more, uh, I will tell a few more things about the first. Uh, so the first proposal uh, would allow the institutional position to trump individual claims of the conscience in the all instances. Of course, this is not something which I discovered, but um, it's uh, deeply rooted in the American uh, uh, doctrine, uh, law doctrine. Um, but uh, what we need to say. This means that uh, this model, model one, acts as a broad institutional conscience clause and shifts uh, uh, our societal priorities uh, from the protection of the conscience um, to respect for institutional norms. And of course, um, <laughs> it could be a problematic, right? Because we are talking about the moral marketplace. And um, there are problems in this model. Uh, first of all, um, uh, patients and employees want, they need, or they want to choose medical uh, providers or employers based on moral convictions. But even more, the, the doctors, the nurses, uh, are ready to disclose their deeply held beliefs to patients and employers. So um, this is, could be a problematic because such kind of institutional conscience uh, can exclude uh, certain segments of the society in order to construct a chosen identity. Model two, uh, which is very, um, which is very, uh, hmm, I wouldn't say promoted, but existing in Poland now, now nowadays. Of course, um, um, 
most of the people, if we ask them in Poland about the uh, conscience clause, they would say we do not need institutional conscience clause. Even more, we are afraid of the institutional conscience clause because one day, according to the religious and sociological situation in Poland, we cannot participate in um, health care on equal grounds because maybe or probably we cannot reach possible uh, medical treatment because this institution, public institution, uh, has something which we called the uh, institution conscience clause and we are afraid of such a situation. That's uh, probably, that's why probably the, the polls still um, treat institutional conscious clones and individual conscious clones as, uh, uh, as very, uh, 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 um, very uh, dangerous for uh, them. So the model two prohibits institutions from refusing treatment for moral and religious reasons. So the doctors and nurses would be free to follow their conscience with each institution acting as the facilitator of all conscience. In this model, we are making the primacy of individual conscience and, of course, we are focusing on better and sure patient care. Of course, it would resolve the tension between refusing institutions and the doctors and nurses who work there. Even more, it would ensure institutions meet accepted medical standards such that patients could expect to receive diagnosis, referrals, treatment, and, and other things in any relevant facility. But also in this model, the institutions can better bear the uh, administrative costs, costs of increasing patient access and managing staff with a different moral views. But law demands just that from willing institutions. So it is it, how, how we can make it in Poland? Uh, very simply, in the internal regulations, we can put an obligation to accommodate refusing providers. And it could be like that, imperative that the institutions obtain the services of responsible physicians and other necessary personnel whose personal views, for example, on abortion do not prohibit them from providing or participating in abortions or sterilizations and so on and so on. Or even more simply, we can make internal regulation like that. Institution X, requires, for example, pharmacies to accept and fill prescriptions, but allows accommodation of individual pharmacists' objections. Of course, this is what we have uh, today uh, in Poland. So we have individual conscience clause, and we are not facing yet the situation when all doctors in the public hospital refused to make an abortion. But there are some hospitals when majority of the doctors declared already in informal way to the director that in such a case they will refuse. So the director of this hospital, of the particular hospital, is pretty sure that he is able to perform a legal abortion, but only by a few of doctors can do it in the name of the hospital, because the rest will declare uh, mm, such a uh, uh, such a um, mm, uh, such a, a thing. Um, as a uh, contradictory to the uh, individual conscience. Model two, consequences. Um, 
I go back to the uh, uh, American um, doctrine, and Lynn Ward uh, argues that to deny protection to the healthcare institutions contradicts the central purpose of the conscience clauses, which is to protect the moral sensibilities and deeply held beliefs of the individuals who make up the institution. And secondly, uh, we need to um, add that this model to this proposal effectively prevents those facilities that actually bring together people based on shared convictions from forming association and excluding dissenters. And of course, um, how we can accommodate individual conscience absolutely uh, this is another question, but another uh, question uh, of the Model 2 is that such facilities uh, could face uh, 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 free problems. Uh, maybe they need to remove limitations on healthcare. Maybe they need to close. Maybe they need to become secular, open, public, even if they are public. They need to be more secular, right? Um, so this is a problematic um, for the individuals and for those facilities. And so far, I have no idea how we can uh, uh, resolve this problem, or maybe I have some ideas. So um, let's go back to the uh, uh, to the um, this key point um, remark. Um, so medical uh, hospitals, medical facilities need to give uh, protection to the patients and need to protect the free access to the healthcare. But from the another way, we need to find a good balance between individual conscience and these rights to the healthcare And we need to find out the way how we can deal with those problematic issues. And in this model, uh, and this model actually does not resolve the question of what happened, oh, I'm sorry, of what happens when individual conscience and institutional norms diverge? And of course, we have some problem with uh, legal protection uh, of the right to the healthcare, the constitutional value. And maybe, which I mentioned before, especially in Poland, one day we will we face the problem that public hospital will be not able to give the some of the medical treatments because of the, uh, let's say, institutional conscience uh, clause or individual conscience clause inside of this in public institution. Should we provide the information about the doctors who can perform abortion? Or should we, as a state, provide any information about possibilities of making such medical treatment, legally, of course, also protected? And if yes, how we can make it? So, um, and we need to, uh, to, to say a little bit more that it could be also a more aggressive approach.
in such a situation would avoid this problem by abandoning the ethical compromise and requiring each physician to provide the services associated with his or her speciality. And this is a problem, and this is now debated in Poland. If you would like to be a gynecologist, or if you prefer to be a, a doctor in, uh, in a different specialization, um, and if you at the beginning know that some of the medical treatments connected to your profession, to your uh, specialty, need from you some uh, ethical but non-religiously grounded uh, 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 actions, then just quit or make another possibilities to be a doctor in the different specialization. But this is how cruel this is. But this is debated in Poland. That we cannot separate it um, actions connected to the medical profession, to the medical specialization, because it's uh, somehow integrated to the specialization. So you cannot say no. You can say no at the beginning, and then you just need to change your profession specialization. But if you say at the beginning, then you cannot say no. So this is one problem. Um, another problem is, I'm just going to the end. Mm, if we put uh, into practice this model to which is existing in Poland, this model, this proposal, might reduce the patient access to the medical, medical service, at least in the short term. But as I mentioned, in Poland, uh, many Poles are afraid um, that one day they cannot reach medical treatment which should be open for them because of this individual and institutional conscience. Um, right now, there is a um, heavily debated topic, but in mostly uh, in the medical circles. And what is the solution proposed by them? Ghettonisti, this is Italian word, but I'm not sure that it's uh, a proper what we see on the presentation, but Ghettonisti. So the public hospital under the name of the John Paul II, public hospital under the name of John Paul II, openly in the internal regulation, uh, put the institutional conscience close, but at the same time, as a public hospital, is obligated to perform, for example, abortion in the, of course, legal cases. So this public hospital is hiring the doctors which are openly have no problem with the making an abortion. So they're and the situation in such an institution will be a little bit, uh, let's say, a, a, a tolerant, which Poland was, uh, it's the, uh, uh, it's the, let's say, um, deeply rooted in Poland, in, in history of Poland. So in the public hospital, under the name of the John Paul II, we have the doctors who perform abortion according to their religious affiliation and according to the religious message of the name of this hospital, but still it's public. And at the same time, this public hospital under the name of the John Paul II, hiring doctors with not, uh, with, uh, with uh, a strong position uh, of doing abortion and with no obstacles from, uh, from them. So these public hospitals guaranteed individual conscience for individual doctors and guaranteed the, let's say, moral integrity of the whole hospital, because it's under the name of the, of the saint. And at the same time, 
it's still protecting the free access to the healthcare for those who are able to make legal abortion and it's giving them possibility to make this legal abortion in this public hospital by it, by using the doctors who wish to do so and at least mm, as i tell at the beginning and at the end <laughs> the same um according to the Balas presentation if i well understood uh, in Poland, we are in the position that we need to to give the better protection of institutions religiously oriented. And we can do it by internal regulations, uh, which should be consistent with the constitution, of course. But we can implement institutional conscious class in this sense. But if I well understood, uh, Balash mentioned about identity of the institution. And maybe if we have the space, I would like to 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 have a, a few more questions and few more uh, uh, um, and say a, a little bit of the debate about it because I think it's uh, also um, a great issue in in Poland that uh, we are trying to find when we're talking about the institution conscience clause. For me, it's um, clear that we are trying to find the balance between individual con conscience and institutional conscience, or even more about protecting individual conscience by the institutions, uh, religiously oriented or, or not even religiously oriented, but somehow um, oriented, mm, mm, oriented for the fundamental values. I, I would even say like that. Uh, so thank thank you for uh, um, for giving me the opportunity to 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 say and um, and thank you. <coughs> so thank you for the very interesting presentations. Uh, Balaj to address several questions. Mm -hmm. I also have some questions, but I don't have the strength to stay in uh, the conversation. So uh, feel free to discuss. I stop the recording now.